All right, so Emily, you don't have much left in your bag. Anyone else who joins us here? Nice and light now. So go ahead and reach in there and grab your last items out. Okay, we can set the big baggie aside. You don't need that right now. And then you've got the small bag that says assorted red candies. This is not your morning snack. This is our experiment for the morning. So go ahead and set those there. We can get the bag out of the way now. And we will need cups or bowls, something small that we can put our candies in and add some water, okay? With a little room for water. So these kinds of cups that we've given you and lots of other activities work well. If you want to, to grab those, I know you have some um, that we've given you throughout this week. Or if you want to grab something else, that's fine. Five is what you need, okay? So collect five cups because we have five candies. And you will need some water. So if you want to put some water in one of the cups that you can then transfer into the others, that's kind of an easy way to collect it. Okay? Good morning, Allie. I'll give you a minute to round those things up. And then yesterday, our mini mystery, we went over that one and then, and then left you all hanging. So I can go ahead and reread the mini mystery while you all are gathering your thing. One evening, as Max was out walking, Miss Bennett called his name. He hurried across the street. She was standing in her front yard, but she guided him around to the back. I was watching TV in the living room, she told him, and I heard a crash. Just look, she pointed to her back porch window. Someone threw a rock through it. It's broken into a dozen pieces. Do you know who did it, he asked. No, she replied, he ran off. But I think maybe it was David Lauren. We had a spat the other day because I told his parents he had to stop using my yard as a shortcut, but I wouldn't accuse him of breaking a window without more proof. I'll talk to him, Max said. He found David painting as he bounced a basketball under the light on his garage. Did you just run for Miss Bennett? Max asked. Did you break her window? David shook his head. No. I'm all, of breath, all out of breath because I've been here shooting baskets. I don't know anything about a broken porch window. You're not telling the truth, Max said. So how did Max figure that one out? So Emily, you're looking for five cups or five small bowls. They don't have to be very big. You could even use the little uh, portion cups, okay? You just need five cups or bowls, they don't need to be very big, just big enough to put a candy in and just cover the candy with water. So they don't need to be large, they can be quite small. All right, that's what we're collecting. And then you'll need a little bit of water to put over those. So if you're collecting cups or something, you can just put water in one of the cups that you can then transfer. Okay. All right, so glass, glass will work just fine, Emily, there you go. Glass, and it helps if you can see through it, but you at least need to see from above, okay? So glass or plastic, doesn't matter what it's made out of, just small and just, just large enough to hold one little piece of candy and a little bit of water over it. So 
I'll give you a peek at what I've had cooked in here. So that's what we're going to do with them, okay? So that's all you need. That much water. All right. So did anybody figure out their mini mystery? Did anybody figure out yesterday's mini mystery? How did Max know that David wasn't telling the truth? About his Senate's window. So did you pay attention to what Max said to him? So Max said, all he said to, all, all Max said to David was, did you just run from Miss Bennett? Did you break her window? So he only said two sentences there, one sentence in the question. Did you just run from Miss Bennett? Did you break her window? And what was David's response? Look closely at David's response. David said, no, I'm all out of breath because I've been out here shooting basket. I don't know anything about a broken porch window. So there you go. How would he have known it was a porch window? He certainly didn't hear that from Mac. So that's how uh, Max figured out that David wasn't telling the truth, that he already knew it was a porch window. So we can set that aside and get started with our, our experiment this morning. And in your in your packet, you have the candy conundrum. There we go. That's what it looks like, black and white. And several pages. So we're going to go through Miss Columbine Candy Conundrum. Do you are collecting five cups, or the, the portion cups are just fine, which you have one here. You've got several others this week. You can use these. You can use these kinds of cups. You can use glasses or cups from your house. All right, and a little bit, and some water. So we'll need some water to get back to that. So what happened in Miss Columbine's candy conundrum? Miss Columbine is, or Miss Cornbloom, rather. Okay, Miss Cornbloom is a very sweet teacher, and it is a fun fact that she has a bit of a sweet tooth. Chloe, one of her students, decided to bring in small bags of candy in honor of Miss Cornbloom's birthday today. Chloe filled the bags with different candies. She knew exactly what type of candy everyone in her class liked. So she made sure to fill each bag with only their favorite. She handed Miss Cornbloom a big bag filled with a variety of all the students' favorites and wrote a note that said, here's a bag of our favorite sweets for our favorite sweet teacher. Happy birthday. Miss Cornbloom thought the bags were great and it inspired her to share a candy riddle. She asked the class how to spell the word candy with only two letters. Corbin got it right. Can you? So you can think about that one and jot it down if you have any ideas. The students sang happy birthday to Miss Cornbloom and then it was time for recess. Ms. Cornbloom thanked Chloe and asked the students to please not open the bag. She asked them to save the candy for later when they got home. She reminded them of the awful ant problem the year before and did not want to attract any ants again this year. Custodian Calvin would not be happy. Ms. Cornbloom dismissed her class and rushed to the office to make some copies. She passed Mr. Crumb on the way out and asked if he could keep an eye on her classroom since she left the door unlocked for a student who was finishing up an assignment. Recess was over, Miss Cornbloom gathered her class and they filed into the classroom. Needless to say, 
Miss Cornbloom was shocked to find smashed bits of candy ground into the carpet. Someone had broken her rule and ate some sweets while she was away. The proof was in the crumbles. Who would do such a thing? She had asked so sweetly. She questioned the entire class. There's candy all over the floor. Who was eating candy in this room? She was met with blank stares. No one admitted to breaking the rules. She knew it would be up to her to figure it out on her own. What do you think, Miss Cornbloom? should do first. Okay. Any ideas as to what she should do first? So each of the bags had different um, candies that were given to the students. Okay. So, but they all had one thing in common just like your cup of candies there. What color are all of these candies? They're all red, right? So she can't tell from the color of the pieces what they are, but maybe there are other ways she can figure this out. So next page has a chart you can complete. And this is this graphic organizer helps us use deductive logic. So we talked about collecting evidence, right? And we, we did everything from impression evidence. You guys did some eyewitness testimonies with your teachers. Uh, we've talked about all varieties of physical evidence that might be left at a scene. It's helpful to keep track of the evidence that you collect and the information that, that may provide, okay? So this sheet that looks like a clipboard is going to help you chart some of that so it's easier to keep track of, okay? So here we have, what is the crime? So what, what happened there? What was the crime? So, Ms. Cornbloom had specifically said, while everyone was given bags of candy, these are for you to take home and enjoy at home. But I don't want you to eat them in my classroom because we had a really bad ant problem last year. We don't want that again. So, yeah, sorry, turn off that radio there. So, the crime here is eating candy, yep, eating candy in the classroom. So somebody ate, opened their bag and ate it in the classroom. Who is the victim? So you can try to identify who might be the victim. So Ms. Cornbloom had asked, please don't do this in my classroom. Where did it happen? In her classroom, right? And so Emily, if all of the candies are red, is that gonna be tricky to use just the color of the candy to, to find out? So we may have to dig a, dig a little deeper than that, okay? And then, so when did the crime occur? So we have a gap there. She left to go to the office. And as soon as she dismissed her class, she rushed off to the office. And she was out until recess. So we have a, a defined time period there where this could happen. So the candy, Emily, is the, the last thing. You have two final things in your bag. And this is the candy we're referring to, okay? One of the small bags, the last small bag in your kit, that's what you need. That's the candy, okay? All right, and how did it occur? So Jack, so this is gonna help you frame your, um, your process here as you try to gather your clues, collect your evidence and, and solve the conundrum. So the chart at the bottom of the clipboard wants you to look at who might have had a motive 
what the motive might be. <laughs> Emily, we teased it. It's not our morning snack. And I hope you ate breakfast because we can't eat it. We have to use it for our experiment. And then, so on, on one side with the column that has everyone's name, we're going to look at what their motive might have been. And then we're going to look at whether they may have had the opportunity to commit the crime of eating the candy in the classroom. Okay? So you can write yes, no, or maybe in the squares under each column. Um, and if, if they had a motive, yes, no, or maybe. And then you can do yes or no if they may have had a chance to do it based on the clues. So you have more clues coming. So you're going to hang on to this and use this to gather and, and organize your data. And then you can make your inferences from the data you collect. Okay. So next page is, and this looks like our notepad. So just like we put a notepad in our CSI kit that we made yesterday to um, collect our data, to write down any information that we notice, um, you can use this sheet to help you do the same thing, okay? So we have Casper, Allie, Christine and Corbin and Chloe. So five students. And we're going to look at their statements here. So Ms. Kornbloom decided to interview each of the five students that Mr. Crumb, the gentleman that she asked to keep an eye on her classroom as she walked out, since she had to leave the door open to let a student finish an assignment, he saw five different students going in or out of the room. So these five students are her suspects. Look at the statements from Ms. Kornbloom's notebook. As a detective, what are your thoughts about each person's motive or opportunity? Record your answers on the candy conundrum clipboard. Casper said, I would never eat candy in your room. I did run back into the classroom to grab my reading book about five or seven minutes after being at recess. Okay, so it sounds like Casper went back into the room. Did he have the opportunity? Did he have a motive? So Casper's lying there. You can write yes, no, or maybe as to whether he may have had a motive and the um, whether he had the opportunity, you have the um, did, did they have an alibi? So I know you guys talked about alibis earlier in the week. That someone that, that's, that's if someone can corroborate that they were in a, a different place at the time and so would not have been able to have been the person who committed the crime. Clue three is going to be the suspect can be. And clue four is going to be the candy analysis. That's the experiment we're getting to here. Okay, so right now you're looking at this first column motive and the second column of opportunity. So for Callie, she says, I was finishing up my job sharpening pencils for the first few minutes of recess. I left my snack at home and hurried out to see if Corbin would share his with me. So. Callie, did she have the opportunity? So she was left in the room because she was sharpening her pencils. Did she have a motive? It sounds like if she was very hungry because she had left her snack at home, she may have had a motive there. Okay, so when you look at Callie's line, you can put a yes, no, or maybe for the motive. And did they have the opportunity? Christine says, even though I forgot to eat breakfast, it wasn't me. I left the classroom at 10.55 a.m. as soon as I finished the math assignment. Okay? Good. Sounds like 
Christine may be the student that uh, Ms. Cornblum was referring to that was finishing an assignment that she left the door unlocked for when she talked with Mr. Crumb. And she forgot to eat breakfast. So she could have been hungry as well. She says she left the classroom at 10.55. Let's see what further information you can collect here. Corbin says, I grabbed my snack and left right when Miss Cornbloom dismissed us at 10.50 a.m. Okay, so Christine was in the classroom until 10.55, so there were five minutes there. Corbin says, I grabbed my snack and left right when Miss Cornbloom dismissed us at 10.50 a.m. I went back to the classroom at 11 a.m. because I wanted my water bottle but I didn't eat any candy, okay? So Corbin, did he have a motive? He had a snack. He went back into the classroom because he wanted his water bottle. He's saying he didn't eat the candy. What do you think? Yes, no, or maybe? And then did Corbin have the opportunity? So first he said he left right when she dismissed class and when she left at 10.50. However, he then went back into the classroom at 11 a.m. to get his water bottle, okay? So did he have an opportunity? So choose whether that's a yes or a no in the opportunity column. Chloe, I gave out the candy bags and took the leftovers to custodian Calvin around 10.51 when recess started. He was really happy. I saw that he needed help putting chairs away, so I did that until the recess bell rang at 11.10. Okay, so we've collected some information here, not just about the individuals, and we're tracking that in, uh, on, our, our, on our clipboard here, but we also now have our defined time period, the when the crime occurred. So we know that Ms. Kornblum left the classroom at 10.50. And now we know that she collected everybody from recess and went back into the room. So 11.10 is when the bell went off. She then collected everyone from recess and went back into the room. Okay, so we have some more information there. You're gonna to wanna to keep that handy so that we can reference it. So now, here she's made her notes. Oops, there we go. So she's made her notes here at the next page. <laughs> Good, welcome guys. So we are working on the candy conundrum activity. And for that, we emptied our bag now. We have the papers in the last big bag. And we have the assorted red candies in a little cup with a lid, okay? And for this, we needed five cups. So we need five cups for the candy you can use this as one of them. If you want to gather other portion cups, Tiana, you, you can use these, or you can use some of these cups or a mixture of the two. It doesn't matter. You just need five cups and some water. We're going to add some, some water. So you may want to have that handy. All right. So let's look at Ms. Cornbloom's notes. She left for the workroom at 10.50 a.m. She asked Mr. Crumb to watch her class while she was at recess. Mr. Crumb had recess duty. He noticed five students coming or going from her classroom. Those five students were Chloe, Sally, Casper, Christine, and Corbin. The same five that we have on our clipboard. The same five that she interviewed and took statements for. So these are our five suspects. And so, so Tiana, 
we're using this what happened and Maria, now you're on with us. Welcome everybody. So we're using this candy conundrum activity, the black and white one that has the teacher standing on the side. All right. So she, we're going back to her notes. She found the smashed candy on the floor by the front door when she brought the students in from recess at 11, 12. So we have a window of between 10.50 a.m. to 11, 12 a.m. So if we do the math there, we have 10 minutes before 11, right? 12 minutes after 11, we have 22 minutes that elapsed there. That was an opportunity for one of the five suspects to commit the crime. The candy evidence was small bits of bread. So Tiana, for uh, Maria, you guys that are just joining us, we read the story of what happened in Miss Hornblum's candy conundrum, and a student very sweetly wanted to celebrate her birthday and gave everybody bags of candy, and. All of the candies were red, and she knew everybody's favorite candy, so she made separate baggies for each student that had their favorite candy. So if a student's favorite candy was Skittles, they got a whole bag of red Skittles. And if a student's favorite candy was M&M's, they got a whole bag of red M&M's. But Miss Cornbloom got a mix of everybody's favorites, and she presented that to her as a gift. So. That's what we're going from here, but all of the candies were red. So just looking at the crumbles of candy on the floor meant that Miss Hornblum couldn't figure it out just by looking at it. They were all little red pieces, okay? She checked with Mr. Calvin and he confirmed that Chloe was with him for the entire recess because Chloe's statement said she gave out the bag of candy and took the leftovers to custodian Calvin at 10, around 10.51 when the recess started. He was really happy. She saw that he needed help putting chairs away, so she did that until the recess bell rang at 11.10. Well, Mr. Calvin, when Ms. Kornbloom followed up with him, he corroborated Chloe's statement that she was indeed with him. He confirmed that she was indeed with him for the entire recess because she did help him put the chairs away. So while Chloe, regardless of her, whether she may have had a motive here, we can look at that um, alibi opportunity, this clue two column with our opportunity data and she does have an alibi. That means that she did not have the opportunity to commit the crime. She wasn't there during that time period. Okay, so we can put that, put a no for that. All right. Find out what type of candy was given to the student suspect. So this is her next mission. All right, so next page is our suspect names and candy. And this one is given to you as a logic puzzle. Instead of just straight out telling you what um, candy each child received, you are gonna need to figure this out. So more deductive reasoning here, more logic challenges for you, okay? And, and it was a very serious offense for her, wasn't it? Because she had had an aunt in her classroom in the previous year. She did not want that again. All right. So she is determined to find out who broke her rules and, and ate the candy and left crumbs all over the floor. So now we're down from five subjects to four. The four suspects who had an opportunity to eat in the classroom were Corbin, Callie, Jasper and Christine. We ruled Chloe out because she has an alibi helping Mr. Calvin. So four down to four, 
Their last names are Levine, O'Malley, Jasper, and Morgan. None of the first names rhyme with the last names. Okay, so your first challenge is to figure out what first name goes with what last name. So we have Corbin, Callie, Casper, and Christine in our column on the left side of the chart. And the rows going, or the, in, on the rows going across, uh, along the, down the left side of the chart on the columns going out to the right, we have the last name possibilities, Levine, O'Malley, Jasper, Morgan, those are the four last names. So if something cannot be true, and we've been told that none of the first names rhyme with that student's respective last name. So if it rhymes, it cannot be their last name. So let's look at Corbin in the first row, Corbin Levine. Do those, do those rhyme? So, and if something, so if something cannot be true, we're going to put an F. If um, we can mark O if there are no other options, and O means it must be true, okay? So, Corbin Levine, it does not rhyme, but we don't know if that is Corbin's last name. So, we don't have to put anything there right now. Corbin O'Malley, does that rhyme? Corbin O'Malley, so that, that does not that does not rhyme. So there's the possibility, but we don't yet know that it could be true. So you can leave that blank for now. Corbin Jasper, okay, that doesn't rhyme, but we don't yet know if that's true. There are still other options because it could be O'Malley or Levine, and Corbin Morgan. So Corbin Morgan does rhyme. No, it can't be. Morgan can't be Corbin's last name. So let's drop an X in my pencil. Let's draw an X in that column because we know Corbin cannot be Corbin Morgan. All right. Callie. So we have Callie Levine does not rhyme. So maybe Callie O'Malley. That one is our rhyme, right? We can't have that one. That's, we know that's not Callie's last name. Callie Jasper, that doesn't rhyme, so that's a possibility. And Callie Morgan, okay? So now we, we're getting to some X's on our chart here. We keep going, Casper Levine. Maybe it doesn't rhyme. Casper O'Malley. That one doesn't rhyme, so maybe Casper Jasper. Well, that's our rhyme, so we know that's not Casper's last name. Jasper has to be somebody else's last name. And then Casper Morgan. That doesn't rhyme, so that's a possibility. Christine. So we have Christine Levine. Well, there's our rhyme right off, okay? So we know that none of the first names rhyme with the last name, so we're going to put an X in that column. Christine O'Malley could be Christine Jasper, Christine Morgan. Okay. So now you have to look at what combinations are possible here. All right. We've got some more information to go by. And we can continue to fill out our chart. The suspect whose last name is O'Malley likes jelly beans. Okay. So O'Malley likes jelly beans. All right. Let's see. Neither have so here we can go down. If you look in our rows on the left. We can go down to so the suspect whose last name is O'Malley likes jelly beans. Okay, so that could be true. 
we can do a an O there. Okay. The let's see, neither Callie or the student who likes Skittles have last names beginning with L or O. Okay, so we know Callie doesn't have a last name. Oh, wait, so, so Callie and the student who doesn't who likes Skittles, they have last names beginning with L or O. Okay, so let's see, Levine and O'Malley are our last names. Start with L and O. So we know that Callie and the student who likes Skittles don't have a last name that begins with L or O. So let's find Callie and put an X in Levine because Callie's last name cannot start with L or O. And we had already ruled out O'Malley for her. Okay, and now the other part of that clue was the student who likes Skittles does not have a last name. Neither Callie or the student does not have a, a, a last name that begins with L or O. Okay, so now we come down to our Skittles row, which is the bottom row in that chart. Okay, we're going to write an X in that column, and the student who likes Skittles can't have a last name starting with O either. She's going to write an X in the O'Malley column. All right, so our goal is to remove more options with more X's and then start to narrow down our O's. Okay, and see how that helps us out. Corbin was really happy to have gotten his favorite flavors of gummy bears. So we have our first clue where we know something must be true, okay? Or actually, no, we, we did. We found out that O'Malley likes jelly beans, okay? Now we have Corbin was really happy to have gotten his favorite colors of gummy bears. So we know that Corbin got gummy bears. So if you notice, your candies are not just on the left in your rows. They're also on the right in your column. So let's go on Corbin's row all the way across. Corbin was really happy to have gotten his favorite flavors of gummy bears. So we're going to put a big O there because now we know that must be true. He definitely received gummy bears. Okay. So if he got gummy bears, that means he did not get jelly beans. They only got their favorite candy. He did not get M&M's. He did not get Skittles. So you can not just write the O in, in gummy bear, you can also go across and write an X in jelly beans, M&Ms, and Skittles, okay? All right, so now we've got our next, our next clue here, let's say. Casper and the suspect who got M&Ms are really good friends. Casper and the suspect who got M&Ms are really good friends. Okay, so Casper and who never got M&Ms, they're good friends. All right, so does that help us rule anything out? If everybody only got one type of candy, that gives us one piece of information, right? If Casper is good friends with the person who got m and m did Casper get m and ms What do you think, Allie? What do you think, Mario? What do you think, Tiana, Emily? What do you think? So if Casper is good friends with the person who got m and ms he did not get m and ms We can eliminate that as an option for him. The suspect whose last name is Jasper loves chocolate. So of all of our candies, where's the chocolate here? The suspect whose last name is Jasper loves chocolate, okay? So I only see one candy here that has chocolate. We have gummy bears, jelly beans, m and and Skittles. So we're gonna do a big O in the Jasper column 
on the M and M row. So we're gonna put our O there. All right. And if something must be true, remember that means we can eliminate the other possibilities. Okay. So that means not only can we put the O there, but we can also put an X in gummy bear, jelly beans, and Skittles. Okay. And let's go on to the next one. So we've got Christine does not like candy. That rhymes with her first name. So what rhymes with Christine? We have gummy bears, jelly beans, M&M's, and Skittles. So Christine and beans, so jelly beans. She does not like candy that rhymes with her first name. So Christine does not like jelly beans. All right, so in our Christine row, we can go across to our jelly bean column and put an X there. We know that she does not like jelly beans. All right, so we're getting a lot more X's and O's here, and this is gonna help us eliminate other possibilities here, so. So you can now go through and continue. So where you have O's and X's, see what you can eliminate and what you can, um, what you can now verify is must be true. By eliminating other options, we know we're, that we're left with um, Anywhere you have an O, that means it must be true, right? Look at those um, rows and columns and see where you can put your other X's, okay? All right. So I want to, you guys can continue to work on that. I want to start this last piece because I want you guys to have some time to see what happens here. So we're gathering cups and um, water. It could be the little cups. It could be the big cups, doesn't matter, but we have a cup. So I asked you to collect five because you want to have one for each of your pieces of candy. Okay. So go ahead and put your gummy bear in a cup. Okay. Put your jelly bean in a cup. And I went ahead and marked which is which, so I can clearly see if you may want to do that, or put a piece of paper under it that says what's what. All right, Skittle, Eminem, and our last one is our candy evidence, okay? So, get these out of my way, and I'm gonna use my cup of water that I got when I got my cups. Okay, and we don't need a lot of water. We just need to pour it over so that it covers the top of the candy. Because we are going to see, since we know all the pieces are red, we're going to see what happens to the color of these candies while well, they're all red. Is there anything that's different about them? If she were to add water, to her crumbs, could that help her solve her conundrum? Could that help her solve this crime and figure out which of her suspects ate, had the candy that was all over the floor? So I'm gonna put my water away and you guys know I said stuff that I'm clumsy and messy. So I have my paper towels and my, my water on the corner of the table there. So you can see that as you add the water, I see you guys working hard in there, as you guys add the water, very quickly, you can notice a difference. So my water has gone from clear. In my M&M cup, it's already, some of the red is coming out of the M&M &M and, and leaching into the water. The Skittle as well. And if you look closely at the Skittle, what's under there is white. Have a look at that. So my jelly bean doesn't seem to be changing a whole lot yet. Gummy bear, I don't see much happening there. 
and my candy evidence. Look at that. I see a lot of red coming off, okay? And then I'm gonna show you because I started this earlier this morning. And let's move these up so that you can see with a little time. You guys are so smart to recruit help. Look at that. All right. So I'm gonna move these up front so you can see after more time. So I started these probably an hour ago. They've been sitting for a while. And now, look at that. Now my gummy bear is. Oh my goodness, and the candy evidence. Okay, whoa. I am doing some cool things there. I'm afraid that if I lift it, it won't um, get that. Can you get an overhead of that much? <laughs> so the Skittles, the dye came off, the color came off really quickly. And the m and m um, it was not quite as fast as the Skittle. The Skittle, I, right away after I poured that water over it, um, my water turned red and my Skittle started to look white. My m and stayed red much longer, but now I see white coming off with it. It looks like, um, a, star, like a, a starburst pattern. You see this, these white streaks coming off. Um, so try that with yours and see if you can set it down still. Uh, because that's pretty cool. And then it almost looks like spin art. Okay. And then now my M&M from an hour ago, I see um, no red left on the candy. I see no white left on the candy. All I see is that chocolate in the middle. And look at the liquid around it. So the liquid around it is red and it has some white. So. Your last page is your candy evidence, and this is where you're going to chart your observations about the, um, the candies, what's happening to the candies when you added the water. And not just what's happening to the candy, but also what's happening to the water itself, what the candy is doing to the water when they combine. So you can look at um, the color or clarity of the water. Um, what's interesting is my, um, my Skittle that I just did, the water is still looking very translucent. It has some red tint to it, but the water looks clear. Um, let's see, where is my, the M&M, got kind of a separation of clear water and a cloudier layer on the bottom. All right, and then if you look at my, the front cups, these are the ones that I did an hour ago. So these have really been let to sit and you can see definite differences between the clarity and the cloudiness. My jelly bean, that took a long time, look, my jelly bean is hardly leaching any color still so from the one I just did, but, the one I did over an hour ago, my jelly bean is left white, but my water is really translucent, whereas the water for all the others has gotten much more cloudy. Okay? So if you're looking at your candies, and remember, she wasn't looking at the whole candies. You, we started with the whole candies. Um, she only had pieces, but she could still do the same thing even with pieces. It would just happen faster. Increased surface area, some things in, in smaller pieces, that means it's going to have more contact with the water over all parts, and it's going to happen a lot faster. So part of why I also kind of gave you this head start here where I had dropped mine in when I um, first came into the studio. So if you have a look there, you can see our gummy bear, he looks pretty funny. Um, he's still looking yummy in your cups that you just did. He looks much less yummy in the one that I started this morning. He looks very white and very plump and not nearly as tasty. You know, let's that one up. So you guys watch these, let them soak, 
you can continue to make your observations. Remember, the more detailed the observations, the better. Okay, so try to write down as much information as you can, as many details as you can, and see if you can figure out what candy she had in her carpet. So you've got your candy evidence. We had one of each kind of candy and we had a second of one. Which one is that? All right. So I'm gonna let you guys solve that mystery. You can use your logic puzzle because this was helping us get to who had each candy, okay? And use the evidence collected in your experiment here. And between the two, you're gonna figure out who ate their candy of those four suspects we were left with after Chloe was eliminated with her alibi. Who ate the candy in the classroom? So was it the M&Ms, the Skittles, the jelly beans, or the gummy bear? And you can, you can also, remember, use the logic model where you can eliminate one of these is more obvious than the others. Even if it were in pieces, I imagine it would look uh, more different from all of the others. And that is our gummy bear, right? So our gummy bear is distinctly different and he's behaving differently in the water as well. And then we have, so the others were all much smaller and a more similar consistency, harder texture. So even in pieces, these would be harder to tell apart, the M&M, the Skittle, and the jelly bean, okay? So have a look and continue to watch. Let that go for another 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, and see what you think, okay? And if you want to eat it after that, that's up to you and your parents. It may not taste as yummy as <laughs> as the, um, the pure candy that hadn't been soaking in water for 30 minutes or so. But you guys can enjoy that, see what you learn from this. And then you have your I Mad Crime. To, to, so you've been collecting evidence all week long. Um, so don't forget that. You have all of this info you've collected throughout the course of the week. So you may want to go back through your bags and make sure you have all of that together because we had your um, suspect checklist, you had your, your suspect photos, fingerprints, footprints, hair samples, right, and, and the vehicle descriptions, um, shoe, shoe prints, okay, and then you had the clues that you collected throughout the week. So you guys work on that because we're going to get back together this afternoon at one o'clock, yes, one o'clock, okay, and we can talk about that then and see how you did with the candy conundrum, all right, and you've got your detective notebook sheet, and you've got this clue of game as a, as a fun extension activity, if you want to do that, play that with your friends, so that's in this big bag that you got today, it even says clue game right on the outside, so these were the last two things left in our bag today was this clue game bag with our papers and the little bag that had our candies. All right. And in the version in your bag, it's on this nice stiff cardboard cardstock so that you can um, actually cut out the playing cards and play this just like the game Clue. Okay. Yeah. And you do not have to come to the one o'clock. But um, if you want to join us, we'll be on at one. And um, you guys are welcome to play this game with your friends and family. Okay. And you can even play it with your classmates. Uh, there we go. And oh, the other thing I wanted to remind you of when you pull out all of your iMac papers, make sure you grab your mystery powder and liquid chart that we did yesterday. Okay, you did some of this yesterday with me and then you finished some of it afterwards. Put that with your IMAG crime scene photos because remember that powder, that was a part of 
your I-9 crime scene evidence, okay? So you should have quite a file going in your file folder on your I-9 crime scene where you were collecting your evidence. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And, um, and it is optional, so if you can join us, you want to join us, you're welcome to. If not, no worries, guys. And you know, it'll be filmed, so you can always come back to it, okay? Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.